Till now in this chapter we have completed four theorems and they are superposition theorem, Thevenin's theorem, Norton's theorem and reciprocity theorem. Now from this presentation we are going to have discussion on our fifth theorem which is Milman's theorem. We use this theorem to simplify the circuit when it has only branches in parallel. So when we have the circuit which is made up of branches in parallel, we use Milman's theorem to calculate the voltage at the ends of that circuit. And this theorem was proved by Professor Jakob Milman and it is named after him. Now we will move on to the statement of this theorem. If n voltage sources with voltages E1, E2, E3 up to En and internal resistances R1, R2, R3 up to Rn are connected in parallel then these voltage sources can be replaced by a single voltage source E in series with resistance R. So the given statement is very simple to understand. We have n sources connected in parallel and source number 1 is having the voltage E1 with internal resistance R1. Source number 2 is having the voltage E2 with internal resistance R2 and source number n is having the voltage En with internal resistance Rn. Now we want to simplify this network. We want to have the simplified version of this network and we can use Milman's theorem for this purpose. According to this statement, we can replace this arrangement with this arrangement. Voltage source E in series with resistance R. Voltage source E in series with resistance R. Now when you observe, you will find this network is the Thevenin's equivalent network of this network and therefore we can say that R is the Thevenin's equivalent resistance and E is the Thevenin's equivalent voltage VTH. So this is all about the statement. Now what about the expression for E and R? So let us find out the expression for E and R. And the idea is very simple. We will develop the Norton's equivalent circuit for this network. And once we have IN and RN, we will calculate VTH which is E and RTH which is R. Now why we are finding out the Norton's equivalent circuit? The reason is finding out Norton's equivalent circuit for this network is very simple. The step number one is to do the modification of the branches we have. If you focus on this branch, you will find we have one voltage source in series with one resistance. Now with the help of source transformation, we can have current source in parallel with the same resistance. And this current source will have the value E1 over R1. It will be equal to E1 over R1 and this resistance will be R1. Similarly, for this branch, we will have E2 over R2 as the value of this current source and this resistor will be R2. We know this from the source transformation. Similarly, we will transform all the other branches and the final branch which is the branch of nth source will have the value of current source equal to En over Rn and this will be Rn. So we are done with the modification and now we will move on to the calculation of current IN and resistance Rn. To find out current IN we know we need to short the two terminals and we will assign the current which is IN. Now before I explain you what will be IN, I want you to pause this video and try to find out IN on your own. I hope you tried finding out current IN and now I will explain you how to find out current IN which is the Norton's equivalent current of this network. To find out IN we will focus on this current source. It is providing current equal to E1 over R1 and this current in this branch at this node is having two paths to flow through. Path number one is offering resistance equal to R1 and path number two is offering resistance equal to zero and therefore this entire current will flow 
through path number two e1 over r1 and this path will have zero ampere current now moving on to our second source which is offering the current equal to e2 over r2 at this node it is having the same situation this path is offering resistance equal to r2 and this path is offering zero resistance so this current will choose to flow through this path completely so this current will not go through this path and in this we have current e2 over r2 and at this node e1 over r1 will get added to e2 over r2 and here we will have current e1 over r1 plus e2 over r2 similarly all the other currents from the remaining sources will choose this path and therefore current i n the norton's equivalent current is equal to e1 over r1 plus e2 over r2 plus e3 over r3 all the way to e n over r n so in this way we have obtained our norton's equivalent current and uh, now we will find out the norton's equivalent resistance and we know that in order to find out Norton's equivalent resistance, we need to make two modifications in our network. Modification number one is we will open circuit the two terminals and the equivalent resistance between the two terminals from this side is our Norton's equivalent resistance. And the modification number two is we will turn off all the current sources we have in this network. Now when you focus on R1 and R2 you will find they are in parallel and not just R1 and R2 but all the resistors are in parallel and this parallel combination is equal to our equivalent resistance. So we can say that the Norton's equivalent resistance is equal to R1 in parallel with R2 all the way to R n or we can say that 1 over r n is equal to 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 plus all the way to 1 over r n so now we have the norton's equivalent resistance in this form and we already obtained the norton's equivalent current so we can now have e and r we will move on to the formation of Norton's equivalent circuit and we know that in this circuit this one here is our current source i n and this is our resistor r n from this we will have the Thevenin's equivalent circuit this is v t h or i can say e and uh, this is r t h or i can say r and we know that E, which is our Thevenin's voltage, is equal to I n, the Norton's current, multiplied to R n, the Norton's resistance. We obtained I n, it is equal to this. And from here we will have R n. So E, it will be equal to E1 over R1 plus E2 over R2 plus all the way to E n over R n over 1 over R 1 plus 1 over R 2 all the way to 1 over R n. Now we can write this as, we can write E as summation I equal to 1 to n E i over r i or i can write e i multiplied to g i g is the conductance over summation i equal to 1 to n g i so in this way we have e and r which is the thevenin's equivalent resistance we know it is equal 
to R n. So we have R as well. So the conclusion is whenever you have this type of arrangement, you can replace it with the simple arrangement in which E will be equal to this and R will be equal to R n which you can have from this. So we are done with the first part of this lecture and now we will move on to the part 2 of this lecture in which we have this arrangement. Here we have n current sources with n resistors connected in parallel. This current source is let's say I1, this one here is I2 and this one here is IN. This resistor is R1, this resistor is R2 and this one here is Rn. Following the dual of Milman's theorem, we can have a simple network in place of this, which is this one with current source equal to I and this resistor equal to R. Now with the help of Thevenin's theorem, you can simplify this network and you can have I and R. I'm not going to do it. You can do it on your own. I will simply give you I and R. I will be equal to I1 multiplied to R1 plus I2 multiplied to R2 all the way to IN multiplied to RN over R1 plus R2 all the way to RN. This we can write as I equal to summation I equal to 1 to N I sub I R sub I over summation from I equal to 1 to N R sub I. Now moving on to resistance R. Resistance R it will be equal to R1 plus R2 all the way to Rn or we can write R is equal to summation I equal to 1 to n r sub i. So in this manner you can replace this type of network with this network and these are the values of i and r. So I hope Milman's theorem is now clear to you. In the next presentation we are going to solve one question to make you understand this theorem in a better way.